In this video, let's review three basic checks that you can do with the tool to make sure that the tool will measure accurately. These are very basic, and these all can be done and performed by you, and it's critical to making sure that the tool remain ac remains accurate. The first thing we need to do is to make sure that our PPM has been set correctly. The second is to make sure that your prism pole is calibrated correctly and actually level. And the third, make sure you complete a field calibration for your unit. Let's go ahead and go over these briefly one by one. What are parts per million for measuring? What is this concept so that we can understand this and understand what the tool is doing when we establish the parts per million error? Well, let's do a quick definition. PPM technically represents a ratio. Only think about it a ratio. It's a ratio of one over one million if we're talking about one PPM. And this ratio simply explains how many defects are in one million units. And it's a PPM is something that's been used in many scientific fields. And let's talk about how it's used in measuring and how we actually use the number to calculate these errors. Total station measurements have errors and defects that naturally come from your ambient conditions. All ambient conditions means are air pressure and temperature of where you're stationed and where you're laying out. Ambient conditions affect your electronic distance measurements. EDM is a very common term used with total stations because that's what it's doing. It's making electronic distance measurements. So the greatest two common factors in electronic distance measurements that could affect it having an error is air pressure and temperature. So the tool needs to know what your air pressure and temperature are for it to know what the parts per million value is so it could compensate for that and adjust your measurements to be accurate. That's why it's important. And so what I'm going to do now is I'll show you an example of a quick calculation of how the errors of a total station could influence your accuracy and why it's important that the total station knows what those errors are so it compensates for them. Okay, so let's look at this in an example, and let me be as clear as I can. Let's say that you set up your total station, and you're measuring a point that's a certain distance away. We'll get to the distance in a second. On the day that you measure it, the ambient conditions are as follows. 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 29.92 inches mercury is the air pressure. I'll show you in a second of how you can obtain the air pressure. So what you're going to do is you're going to type that into your tablet. When you type that into your tablet, the tablet will let you know what the parts per million error is. So in this case, I typed that in, and on the tablet, it said parts per million was zero, which means that in those ambient conditions, the tool doesn't need to make any sort of adjustments. So I go ahead and make that measurement, and let's say that the measurement comes back as 100 feet. Okay, so 100 feet is the distance from the total station to that object, and now let's say I go back, I set the total station up the same exact way, but my ambient conditions have changed, and they've changed as follows. Let's say the second time I go out and measure it, it's now 20 degrees Fahrenheit, and my inches mercury air pressure has now changed to 30.02. You probably guessed that indeed I'm going to have a parts per million error, and when I type it into my tablet, it's coming up as negative 28.909. Now, if I don't type this into the tablet, all that means is that, that the even though I'm measuring 100 feet, the distance that comes back to me on my tablet is going to be wrong, unless I compensate for that error. And let me show you how I would calculate what that error would be. And this is a simple formula to calculate parts, parts per million error. All you have to do is take the distance that you're measuring, divide it by 1 million, and multiply it by the parts per million, 100 feet divided by 1 million times negative 28.909. This, is giving it, this will give me the distance that the total station would have read that distance if I did not compensate for that error. 99.997 feet. Okay, so if I forget to put in my ambient conditions, I would have a 0 .003 foot error between these two measurements, even though they technically are the same. So you can imagine, especially as you go further and further distances away, this is going to be more and more of an issue. So I would definitely recommend that you, every day when you set up the total station, set your air pressure, set your temperature correctly. It's just a good practice, and it's easy to do. Here's a look at the tablet. If you look at the top right, that's what the tablet's asking you to input. And what I did is I went to weather.gov, and for where I'm at in Dallas, Texas, I went to the three-day history of the zip code I was at, and I found that the air temperature was 88 degrees Fahrenheit, so I typed that in. And I also found that the um, air pressure was coming up as 29.98, so I typed that in. And upon doing so, the parts per million automatically adjusted for me to be 9.653. 
And at that point, my work is done. The total station now knows how to calculate for the errors as it's making its measurements around my job site, and I can be confident that it's going to be as accurate as possible. Now, there are other units for measuring air pressure depending on the country you're in. In the U.S., we use inches mercury a lot, but if there's another one that you use in your country, you can use those as well. Now, the point after all this that I want to hone in on is simply this. The PPM is simply a number that the tool uses to compensate any errors that come from measuring in your condition, in your ambient conditions. You don't need to think about it beyond that. Use this slide to go back and refresh what it's doing in the background, but all you need to make sure you do is type in the correct air pressure, type in the temperature, and let the tool do the rest and you'll be accurate. It's very important to do this, especially before doing a field calibration as well. So now let's go on to the second one, where we talk about the prism pole. And this might be an image you've seen before. Of course, we always mention that we want to have our prism, which is indicated by this orange top up here, towards the bottom because that actually eliminates a lot of the prism pole leveling errors that you might experience. But let's suggest that for whatever reason you're using your prism pole and the prism is on top of your prism pole more often than not. Either way, that's fine. But the idea behind this is that if you are using a prism pole to make measurements, especially control point measurements, this prism rod needs to be level. It needs to be level. And for the simple reason that even if it's slightly out of level to the left or to the right, the point you're staked on might be down here, but the tool is reading the actual prism. And you can see here that, that if that's not level, it's going to be causing some sort of deviation with the actual point you're trying to measure, which will make you inaccurate. So let's talk about how you can make this an accurate and level prism rod. So to calibrate your prism rod and to make sure that it actually is indeed level, what you need to do is you need to look at the bottom of the pole and you'll notice some calibration Allen screws that you can adjust and move that prism bubble that you see on the top. Now, some of you might wonder, well, that bubble is going to be able to mention that it's level, so why do I need to change it? Well, the bubble actually can move a little bit. Uh, any level that has a, those screws beneath it can actually change a little bit. Uh, but that means it's a good thing. It can be calibrated. It can be fixed if it ever goes out of level. So to calibrate the prism rod, we have, we have two methods that I, that I use fairly often. The first one is if I'm not able to use my total station, uh, where I basically take the four foot level rods that I can find on my job site and I put them on the prism rod and I level it manually. I make sure that it is stay, staying up manually and I completely disregard the bubble. After I've, after I've leveled it with those level rods, I can then look at the bubble and see if I need to make any adjustments on those screws that appear here at the bottom. If I have my total station, which I think might be a little bit more accurate, is I can use the vertical alignment function on the tablet and I can use that by putting a prism on the top and a prism on the bottom to align that prism rod vertically. Then I'll look at the prism pole and I'll readjust the calibration screws to match the bubble. There are videos that are going to come out um, on both these methods if you need help, but that's essentially all you're doing. Leveling the prism rod manually or some other way other than using that bubble, looking at the bubble, and then changing it accordingly. Once it's changed, then you have now a calibrated prism rod and you can be a lot more confident going out to the field and laying out your points. This prism rod any most prism rods that are out there are carbon fiber which means they can't bend um, once they bend they'll just shatter or they'll break so you can be confident that the pole itself is level and it's not bending but it's whether or not that bubble in there is level or not that you need to calibrate and finally the third check is to perform a field calibration now there's already videos that have been made on this for both a pos 180 pos 150 plt 300 units uh, but all, all I'm going to say about it here is that doing a field calibration takes any internal errors that the tool experiences in measuring points, and it saves them internally so it knows it how to compensate for them when you're measuring in the field. I highly recommend you do this on a regular basis. Uh, but again, if you ever are starting, especially when you're starting the job, perform a field calibration and make sure that before you do any sort of control point checks that everything's calibrated correctly. So let's do a quick recap. We talked about parts per million. We talked about calibrating your prism pole, and we talked about doing field calibrations. Do those three, and you should be good to measure points on your job site and start troubleshooting your control points.